From our Call 6 investigators, hidden camera videos raising questions tonight about a Marion County judge's wedding business. Small claims court judge Michelle Scott is accused of using public resources to promote her private business. Our Call 6 investigators went undercover and found public employees in the city county building handing out business cards for Scott's wedding services. Call 6 investigator Kara Kinney joins us now with what she uncovered and why this could be cause for concern. Kara. That's right, Todd. A lot of judges perform weddings, especially small claims court judges. But the rules of judicial conduct say judges are not allowed to use their prestige or their facilities to promote their own economic interests. Now, it's not yet clear if Judge Michelle Scott has violated that rule, but wedding officials say they're at a disadvantage because Judge Michelle Scott is getting free advertising and the best spot in Indianapolis. We're gathered here to celebrate love. David Daniels loves love. To love, honor, and cherish. But he says finding people to marry isn't easy, and he spends a lot of time and money on advertising, like hauling this chapel to festivals. We have to spend a lot of money on websites, professional memberships. Daniel says Center Township Small Claims Court Judge Michelle Scott is getting free advertising at the city county building. It's where people go to get their marriage license. A fellow wedding officiant captured these videos showing public employees at the CCB handing out Judge Scott's card, directing people to her private office and the wedding business she runs with her husband, Rich Scott. Where's the justice of the peace? Okay. Okay. To get, you got your marriage license on yes. there. They're down the street, 120 East Market Street. Okay. 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 They're down the street. You can okay. A fluke? The Call 6 investigators wanted to find out and headed to the CCB with our hidden camera asking for a place to get married. First, the information desk, which is run by the city county building authority, government workers. Looking for a place to get married. Is there any, do they do it here or do they? Um, no. There's oh, okay. an office. Okay. On Market Street. Yeah. The judge uh, from Small Things, she has oh, an office sweet. there. All right. And if she's not there, uh, her husband is, and he's authorized to perform oh. ceremonies as well. When we went to the Small Claims Court in the basement of the CCB asking where to get married, a court staffer handed us Scott's business card. You call and make your appointment, okay? And on the way out, we asked another worker at the information desk. She too gave us Judge Scott's business card and directed us to Scott's private office. Numbers obtained by the Call 6 investigators show Michelle Scott and her husband Rich perform more weddings in Marion County by far than any other wedding officiant. More than 1,300 since January 2013. That's 12% of all ceremonies performed. I don't see where it's ethical. According to their wedding website, the Scots charge $150 for weekday weddings at their office, $300 on the weekends. So we wanted to ask Judge Scott if she's creating an unfair advantage. Is Michelle in here? No. Michelle Scott? Yeah, come in here with the camera. It's a Okay. Are you her husband? We're just trying to find out why these cards are being I mean, handed I'm, out at the I'm, I'm not a government GCD. official. I'm a, I'm a private citizen, okay? Right. In my office. Thank okay. You. We tried Judge Scott at her small claims court office, but she wasn't there and did not respond to our emails and text. We showed some of our videos to Judge Rosenberg, who serves as the advisor for small claims court, and he told me he's concerned and is investigating. We should also point out when we asked the clerk's office where to get married, they followed their own policy and told us to do our own research. We can't give you any um, place to go to. You can Google it on our computer. David Daniels says that's how all government workers should handle the question, where can I get married? I pronounce that you are husband and wife. Sir, you may kiss your bride. Now, in response to our inquiries, the head of the building authority says they have now stopped handing out Scott's business cards. But if someone asks for the closest place to get married, they will send them to Scott's office on Market Street. A spokesperson for the Supreme Court says they are urging the state legislature to reform small claims courts. As of now, their judges are part-time and are not required to submit full financial disclosures like full-time judges are. I'm Call 6 investigator Kara Kenny. I work with Karen. I know she's going to keep asking a lot of questions about this situation. Absolutely. Very interesting.
Only on our TV6, the state of Indiana could be missing out on millions of dollars to fix your roads. Yeah, you know those blue logo signs you see on the highway? Our Call 6 investigators found a private company actually operates them, and that company is raking in some serious profits. Call 6 investigator Kara Kenny has been digging into the contract and was shocked by what she found. On the highway, you might even use them when you need gas or a bite to eat. They're helpful. I use them, you know, if you're like trying to find, like, you know, just something quick. Indiana has more than 1,800 blue logo signs. Who do you think operates those? The highway department. I assume the state. Illinois runs their logo sign program, but not Indiana. We contract with a private company called Indiana Logo Sign Group. This is their office on East 96th Street. Indiana businesses pay them to be on the blue signs. According to the contract we obtained, Indiana Logo Sign Group gets to keep 90% of that revenue. Indiana gets 10% to help fix your roads. It flies in the face of logic. You know, somebody didn't use good business sense when they negotiated that. Jay Ricker owns 50 convenience stores throughout Indiana. I think we're missing out on tens of millions of dollars. The Call 6 investigators contacted every single state and found in terms of profit sharing, many states had better deals than Indiana. Michigan gets 15% of the revenue, Kentucky 35%, Tennessee 74% of the revenue, and Ohio, they operate on a flat fee basis, receiving $5 million a year. That's 80% of the profit. Indiana, yes, a smaller state, receives about $460,000 a year from the sign program. Which is totally uh, outrageous. Scott Imus is the director of the Indiana Petroleum Marketers and Convenience Store Association, which has been looking into this contract for years. Imus and the Call 6 investigators found Indiana businesses pay among the highest in the country to be on the signs, more than $3,700 a year for four signs at an interchange. I think it's a bad deal for a Indiana, certainly Indiana businesses. The last time Indiana put the highway logo sign program out for bid was in 1988 when Robert Orr was governor. Indiana logo sign group won the contract and for 19 years, Indiana received zero profit from the sign program. After a renewal in 2007, the state started getting 10% of the revenue. The current contract doesn't expire until 2026. We asked to speak with Indiana Logo Sign Group's Hi. president, Bill Drew, okay. but he told our camera to stay in the hall. Via email, okay. Drew told us the revenue sharing amount is determined through negotiations after considering the various unique characteristics of the individual state. So we took our questions to NDOT spokesperson Will Wingfield. Is Indiana missing out on money for its roads? This program began as uh, one that had no taxpayer investment whatsoever. Wingfield explains while other states have used their own money, Indiana Logo Sign group invested in the infrastructure. Uh, they were the ones that uh, have, have invested their own money to build this program up from, from scratch. What does NDOT say to criticism that other states are getting a better deal than the one that we have in Indiana? Right, and I think one of the key differences is that this program has always been run as a private business. Breaking its contract with Indiana Logo Sign Group could get expensive for the state. We would actually have to purchase those signs. Or a new company. It would be another company that would be buying them out and, and it would be several millions of dollars to to buy the signs and, and the active uh, lease agreements. As for the rates Hoosier businesses pay, Wingfield says they're competitive. Of the signs that are out there, about 80, they're 81 percent full. So the price itself is not limiting demand. Yeah, Jay Ricker says paid. these signs are a must if you want a successful business. And that's why he pays up. He just wants Indiana and its roads to get a bigger piece of the money pie. Yeah, it's a good, such a good deal. I'm thinking, wow, I'm in the wrong business. And starting in 2017, Indiana will start receiving more money, 15% of the revenue or $600,000 a year. Now that is the result of a contract amendment that was signed back in 2011. As for exactly how much money Indiana Logo Sign Group is making, we've requested their financial reports, which are required to submit, and we have yet to receive those. And again, Kara, why doesn't the state operate the program? Well, keep in mind, the contract does not expire for another 12 years. NDOT says if they ran the program, you're talking about using state employees with state benefits and pensions to do the work. And NDOT also says contracting out this kind of work ensures it's being run professionally instead of politically. I'll think differently of those blue signs every time I see them now. I had no idea <laughs> this too. was the way they were operated. Kara, thank you.